the Elections Forum. My name is Shauna Martirosian and I am the chair of the Elections Committee. Okay, so we, um, we're going to start with the student trustees and we're going by alphabetical order. Everyone will have about three to five minutes to present and then we will open up for questions. And uh, first student trustee is Ali Ash Ashkar. Hello there, how you doing? Hi. How's everyone doing? Great. <clears throat> so I'm running for the position of student trustee to advocate for you. I've done so on a consistent basis as a senator for Pierce College. For four semesters, I've had the opportunity to lead our students and to fight for our students. One of the big issues that I helped uh, our students on is fighting to keep our food trucks. I, you know, I spoke to the executive board, and it, it, it would have been a doomsday situation had we not fought for, to keep our food trucks on campus. So that's the same kind of leadership that I'm going to you know, go for when there's emergency circumstances. Because I know what I'm doing. Simple, simple, simply put. I'm a political science student and, and an accounting major. So it's, it's the best of both worlds. As a political scientist, you learn policy, you learn strategy, and you need that in, in the position that I'm going to be in, where I'm going to be dealt with the uh, problems and concerns of all 150,000 students. And I'm going to have nine ASO, ASU, ASG presidents coming, coming to my office, calling me on a consistent basis, asking me, how, how do I need, how uh, can you help me, Ali? And I'll be there, hope, you know, whenever they call me, and I'll give them my best advice. So right now I'm currently working on getting reduced textbook prices. That's why I have this wonderful book as my prop. Uh, as you know, uh, there's textbooks are expensive, very expensive. And I was talking to my friend who works at the bookstore at Pierce College, and he told me that you know his chemistry textbook costs 300 bucks. That's more than the actual cost to, to take the class, which is which is unacceptable. And right now. Uh, that's pretty much it. I also have a veterans resolution that's going to be looked into at General Assembly because there's been a lot of crazy things going on to our veterans on campus in the sense that they have to pay out of pocket for their classes and their textbooks and everything else, which they shouldn't be doing under the GI Bill. So thank you very much and have a nice day. up for questions. Um, I have a question for you. What do you want the outcome of your term to be? <clears throat> so the outcome of my term, that's, that's a good question. I want everyone to be happy with what they want to, want to see at, at the district level. If, if elected, I would want uh, our ASO, ASU, and ASG presidents, and everyone else on, uh, on each of the campuses to be uh, welcome and feel that their issues are being dealt with in a timely manner. That's pretty much it. Uh, I have a question. You, got, uh, you mentioned that you wanted more food trucks. Now, what about the type of food that uh, students are left with? Like, they have very few options. Uh, uh, do you want to try to bring in more options for people as well? Of course I do. Uh, that's, that's a very good question. I, ha I have another prop right here. It's the uh, wonderful food master plan uh, that our district crafted back in 2014. I don't know if you were aware, uh, back in se late September, early October, there was a panel where uh, people from the district spoke to our students about food options on campus. And Alex Alvarez, our now club council president, was sitting in, in in that meeting with me, and we firmly spoke to those people about vegans, vegan options, different cuisines, 
we've talked about prices that need to be affordable for all our students. But guess what? The district has been very quiet about those results. Administration has that. All, all the nine college presidents, all the VPs of, of, of administration have that. But they've been very quiet. They have not announced those results to anyone because they want to work on their own. They don't want, they, they feel as if whatever we've told them does not matter. And part of that reason is the current leadership. The current leadership needs to change at the Board of Trustees level, in, in my opinion. The president needs to change because he's been, he's been the one that has been pushing for a one vendor solution, which is, I don't think, acceptable for all nine campuses that are different. Thank you for that question. Gerson Sanchez, but he cannot be here as he is in Sacramento. Um, also, we have Alexa Victorian. She's going to be here later, so when she arrives, she'll have the chance to speak. <clears throat> but um, next up is Brian Orlando Woodard. All I have to say is that to dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go. This is my quest. So, I like starting off like that old music major, by the way. So, um, I have to say it's not as hot uh, today here in the valley as it was in West yesterday. So, uh, I actually feel okay wearing my, my jacket. Um, I'm here as president over at City College. I started out in, uh, uh, as the Senator of Diversity and Equity. One of the re main reasons I, I joined student government was because I saw such poor handling of financial aid on our campus. 60% of our students receive financial aid. Our, dis our district disperses $265 million in financial aid every year. And the way it was handled at our campus locally was terrible. Uh, students were almost fighting inside of the financial aid office. They were being told to come back every other week. And, and they, well, who did you talk to? Well, I don't know who I talked to. They just told me to come back and be fixed. Um, there were a lot of complaints, a lot of anger, a lot of disappointment. Um, and it, it angered and disappointed me. And so I figured, well, what can I do to make a change? I know there has to be some mechanism, uh, some way of speaking for students, some way that students can be heard. And that's why when, when I started investigating, I found out about student government. And when I joined student government, one of the first things that I did was make sure we had a uh, meeting with, um, with the dean of financial aid and with the supervisor of financial aid. I did the research. I called the district. I called the California Student Aid Commission. I found out the policy, the policy that you have to, if you don't disperse the financial aid in two weeks, you have to return it. And we weren't doing that. There were a lot of things that were going on in our district that were just a lot of which is violations of policy. And when I had a chance to speak to, um, to our financial aid supervisor and our dean, we got to hammer out some issues. Uh, our financial aid went from being some point in the semester to being at the beginning of the semester. And last semester, the very first week of the semester. These are the reasons why I fight. I fight because I really, and sometimes it's not fight. Sometimes you just sit down and you have to talk. But this is why I'm here. I'm here to make a difference for every level of difference that I can make for every student that I can make that difference for. Thank you. We're going to ask the question to you. What do you want to be the outcome of your term? I want, I want us to have a, a credit union. I've already had a meeting, uh, two meetings with, uh, a, a, with, two, with a credit union. I think our financial aid situation is terrible with hiring one. I was on the panel, um, I was the chair of the subcommittee to inter investigate Hire One. Hire One had been sued by two different groups of students and they lost both times but for 60 million, 12 million. They, they were fined by the FDIC and the Federal Reserve. And our senator, our representatives said that they are, they are predatory and we should not even be using them. And I, I put this before the board of trustees and I said, why would you put students in, har in harm's way? Why would you allow a company that to steal so much money from students and fees? You get, you, get, you get charged right now. Until May 16th, you'll be getting charged 50 cents per, um, 
debit card use. If you lose that, that debit card, you get charged 20 bucks for the replacement of that. My, what I want the outcome to be is students to actually have the, the issues that they have resolved in some, some substantive manner. Right now, we, we made the adjustment to the higher one contract. Ultimately, I would prefer us to have a credit union. Also, we have this ongoing food issue. City doesn't even have food on its campus at all in any way, shape, or form except one food truck that doesn't serve the needs of the students. And this gentleman said here, that, that was a great question. Uh, student government bought it, brought in a vendor and we sold food, uh, healthy food choices to, and some vegan food choices to our campus because the administration wouldn't do it. Um, I want to fight for us to actually have the, the money that was taken and repurposed from our student for our cafeteria. I want that restored. It was bond money. I want that to happen on every campus where students who are saying, look, we don't have the right types of food choices, and I want that addressed. And it can't be addressed just with uh, um, just talking locally on our campuses. We have to talk at the district. We have to show up to the, to, to the uh, uh, um, if, I'm, if I'm trustee, I can put things on the agenda. I can at least request that to be, I can talk to them. I can have conversation, have a great conversation and a good relationship with Vice uh, Chancellor Corner. Is that one minute or is that? That's one minute. Left. Okay. Uh, with Vice Chancellor Corner and with uh, Chancellor Rodriguez, who I called, and before we had accreditation, I said, look, I need to share some stuff with you before I go to the board, and I don't want to surprise you. He blew my phone up. I got to talk to the Chancellor for 45 minutes. I talked to the Vice Chancellor for two hours and 45 minutes at his office. These are good men, but sometimes they don't know what's actually going on locally, and we have to let them know. And so what do I want? What I want is answers for us that are substantive, that are, are measurable, that we can actually accomplish, and I believe that I can help us do that. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Alexia is actually here. Now, um, yes, Alexia. You got, you got three minutes to talk, and then one, two, two. yeah, one, one minute. Uh, first, I would just like to say I apologize. I'm late. Um, took on the four or five freeway. A lot of students didn't really know what a civic engagement was, and I kind of was walking around all around campus, kind of like a chicken with the, my head caught off. So I was just like, oh, okay. But anyhow, uh, hello everyone. Um, my name is Alexa Victoriano. I am the current ASO vice president at Los Angeles Harbor College. Um, so. I am one of the many wonderful candidates running for city trustee. Um, I believe we all have great qualities, um, but I actually began my tenure in student government in the fall of 2014. Uh, I began as a senator. Um, I, the reason I started in student government, because I came from Santa Monica City College. I saw the resources and the programs that were given to our veterans, our DSPS students, our LGBTQIA community. Um, and all the communities are affected because all of these things are interconnected. These are the things that affect our student success, um, whether we see it or not. But students are affected day to day, and those issues are not being addressed in our district. Yes, we have issues as our homeless students, our foster youth students, our veterans who are not giving um, any resources, and then they're pushed into the streets, and they can't continue their, uh, their, their education. And then that way they, they can't transfer to a four-year institution, which is the main goal, which is the stepping stone of a community college. And I think it's really important that we address these issues. But the only way to address these issues is to be able to be transparent and have effective communication between our AESs, our faculty, staff, and our administration within our college and bring that into the board. But in order to do that, we need to mobilize and not be afraid to speak up for our student rights. I mean, Milo has done a wonderful job. But the, the job needs to continue. We need to continue to mobilize every single student on every single campus and go talk to the district that these things need to be addressed. It's not just one issue that needs to be addressed. There's a plethora of issues to be addressed, and that's what I want to do. Thank you. Uh, so a question that we've been asking each student trustee, um, what do you want the outcome to be of your term? Uh, the outcome I want to be, um, I, I value um, the legacy that I want to leave for my name. It's not just about the title. Uh, the title just gives you access to certain things that most students are not given. Um, and I think it's a, pr it's a privilege and all students uh, should be given um, equal rights, equal privileges, equal resources. Um, at the end of my outcome on my term, I want to be able to say she got things done. 
she wasn't able just to advocate for just one issue, but she was able to target every single thing that affects students. And that's what I want the outcome to be. I want to be able to mobilize every single student. I want to be able to work with uh, my local elected officials. Um, I actually do volunteer with a few elected officials, and I brought some concerns up. Um, I actually volunteered for Warren for Tony, who was in our current uh, board of trustees at ISDD a few years ago. And he's taught me so much and so many things that he would like to work and further um, to continue the process of our LACCD district, because he still cares about us. Thank you. Okay, um, so we could, can we just get Ali back up there, and then we're going to do, uh, like, each person gets a question? Sure. And then, so, um... Yeah. Just one at a time. Okay. We're gonna ask one question at a time. Um, but it goes out to all of the candidates. Um, so, what skills do you have to help you with this position? My political skills. That's pretty much it. I'm, I'm a political science major. I read policy. I know how to use strategy to my best ability. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, um, Brian. Um, if you would like me to repeat the question. Um, skill, uh, um, I have great skill and ability and good looks. Um, so I, I have the ability to get things done. I, I know, um, I love policy. I'm a policy person. When I was working at UCLA for five years, and when I was working in, in trust and investment at Mitsubishi Global Custody in the 90s, I'm a little bit older than you guys, um, I, I was wise and knowledgeable about finances. I was knowledgeable about policy. But I also am knowledgeable about relationships. I'm knowledgeable about how systems work. And inside, and I've had multiple conversations with our current trustee, um, the ability to reach the people you need to reach is, is key. Uh, I have a good relationship with my president and vice president on my campus, even though at times um, I've been on the other side of an, uh, of an issue. And so I know how to stand firmly on an issue but yet, yet still build pathways to the people who are in charge. So that's a skill set that I, I, will, I wear well, along with the suit. And I think that it'll, it'll help me in, in the role. But along with being able to talk to them, I can identify the issue. I'm cognizant of what's going on on our campuses. And I'm, I, I speak with um, our, my constituency. When I was on my campus, I spoke with them. I spoke with my presidents, uh, uh, my fellow presidents at the SAC meetings. When we had students, when Trade Tech said we need help because we, we aren't getting, um, we're not allowed to do our events and they're make, trying to make us sign uh, uh, some bylaws, I spoke to Vice, Pres Vice Chancellor Corner about that. Building a relationship and finding out what the actual issues are, willing to put your neck out in the noose for, for the purposes of furthering the, the, the goal and the agenda, the, the welfare of the constituents is what I, I bring to the table. Thank you. All right, thank you. Do you remember the question? Or? No, can you repeat the question for me, please? Okay, the question is, what skills do you have to help you with this position? Um, I'm actually a double major um, in political science and communication studies. Uh, I think political science helps me because I'm able to do with the policy, I'm able to have effective communication with not just candidates on our boards, but also candidates outside of our organization because po uh, public policy affects the policy that affects our district as well. Um, with communications has been able to help me just, again, have effective communication with people. I'm very personable. Um, I don't sit in my office all day. I mean, I do have an open door policy, but I like to be hands on. I like to be on field to talk to the students. What are the issues that concern you? Because every person has different issues. Every community college has their own unique culture. And it's about being hands on and talking to the student day to day. What are the issues? I, I, I'm able to talk, hey, I'm, I'm not up here. I, yeah, I have a title, but I'm a student too, so I, I have issues, you have issues, let's talk, let's try let's to find a common ground to address those issues properly. Thank you. Can I ask a question of each of the trustees? Yes, you can. I'd like to know what you believe to be, is what, you've got, what your greatest challenge is gonna be if you were to take on this position. What your greatest challenge is gonna be if you were to take on this position. You guys, would, would you mind sitting in the front so you don't have to walk back and forth? Yeah. 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 Sure. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> So my greatest challenge will probably be, uh, probably I'll be in a disagreement with Mr. Svonkin pretty much every week because trying to get Svonkin to understand the plights of students can sometimes be challenging because Scott Svonkin is, you know, he's old. He's, he's a 50-year-old man entrenched in the Democratic Party system and thinks that he can, you know, use this as a stepping stone. And I'm going to be there reminding him, as since he's the president of the Board of Trustees, and I'll talk to the chancellor and vice chancellor like Brian has, if, if elected, and try to get them on my swing and try to lobby the other Board of Trustees members to try to get Mr. Svonkin in line if he's still president of the Board of Trustees. Thank you very much. Uh, Step on the ladies' toes, you know, like ladies first. Um, Is your gender up the Okay. <laughs> no um, my biggest challenge. I don't, I don't, and, and I don't want to have a pat answer because I don't think I have a one biggest challenge because there's multiple challenges. Um, sometimes the challenge is just communication, and as, as Ali pointed out, uh, there are challenges uh, at the board level. But I think. The, the biggest challenge I experienced recently was when we were dealing with Hire One, and I didn't want us to have that contract. So I had to read the policy, then I had to take the chance to put it on the board's agenda, then I had to go down to the district and speak to them and tell them that they were violating policy. And that's a pretty daunting thing because you're looking at these people who, who honestly don't have to listen to you, um, and that you, and at each one of the meetings they tell you about uh, liable or you know be careful about what you say you know and I, I had to make some pretty um, accurate accusations and so my challenge was making sure I had the right policy the right information and the right ability to disseminate it so that it was well received not just attack them but that it was well received because sometimes as a student I get angry but I can't use my emotion to for any, any kind of agenda so the challenge was was crafting a cogent argument for the items that we needed done. We needed some consideration for the contract we currently had. So my biggest challenge will continue to be that, finding the, the best way to make sure that, number one, I cover all, all issues, as many as I can in the tenure that I'm here, because as Alexa pointed out, our camp, all of our campuses are diverse. Every campus has different issues. Some overlap. So finding those that overlap, try to address those quickly as possible, and then finding the mechanism to speak to those that don't overlap. So that's, I think that's a, a challenge for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the biggest challenge, uh, like many of us have said, there's a lot of challenges that need to be addressed. There's a lot of barriers that are going to be put across us, but it's about us being able to speak up and to go through it and find loopholes. I mean, I always tell people, especially in my campus, well, I can't do this. There's loopholes. Trust me. Like every single contract, there's always loopholes. There's always trying to find a way. It's always to fight your way through it. Because if you're really passionate about it and you really care about it, you will find a way to make sure that the job that you need to get done will get done. Um, again, it's about finding a common ground with the issues that we all have. We all have different perspectives. We all have different baggages, we all have different personalities, and it's just, it's about being able to find a common ground because we're all here together. I mean, we're in student leadership. We are here because we care about the students. We care about ourselves. We want to be able to advocate for students just like ourselves and make our, our student life a little bit better. So again, it's just about finding, finding common ground and just keep fighting for it and just, trust me, people always tell on to me and I'm just very, very persistent. If, I, if you don't answer my email, I'll keep emailing you. If, you, if I can't find it through email, I will go to your office. I'll go back and I'll leave messages and messages and messages. And trust me, I, sometimes I can get a little annoying. But if it, if it didn't get the job done, the job will get done. All right, so the next question is going to be, so you guys have been talking about a lot of these issues. Um, what are the main issues that... Uh, concern the schools and the district itself that bother you guys? <clears throat> That's 
So the biggest issues that are affecting all nine campuses have to be the textbooks because they're too damn expensive and you have to pay a fortune to get, get, get an education. And that's, that's a travesty. So what I did was last month, I crafted a resolution to be taken to the Student Affairs Committee and the ASO presidents and the delegates that uh, step in for the ASO presidents approved that resolution. So now it has to go to the Board of Trustees level and they have to approve that resolution. But that was, that was one side of the resolution. The other side was that the, each campus, each ASO needs to work with their academic senate to get reduced textbook prices and zero cost textbooks, online education resources. They need to work with their academic senate to do that. And that is in the process right now. That's being done right now. Uh, we're, I'm going to be talking to the Academic Senate President in, on May 3rd to get that done. The other issue is food services, like I've mentioned before. The district is being very quiet about what the students said about the food. That's, that's not right. That's not right at all, because we took the time, energy, and for them to just sit there and not release the information is annoying. It's just wrong. And, and they know what the issues are. I mean, if you read, I, I encourage everyone to read the master plan that was designed two years ago. In that, they say that we cannot have a national vendor in there because we're not like UCLA or, you know, CISA. That's, that's outrageous. You know, if, if, we, if we need to get fed, we, we need a national vendor in there somehow. Or we need something in there because it's... This, it's just outrageous. Our friends at Santa Monica College have a cafeteria. They eat in there. There's, there's variety there. There's Asian food. There's Mexican food. There's hamburgers. There's, there's your salad bar in there. You know, why can't we just have that here? You know, cut the politics out. Just feed us for once. <laughs> Thank you very much. Seymour. Um, mine is similar. Um, food options, you know, it's a big issue on city's campus. Um, we did do a survey, as Ali stated, and part of that, I was making demands at SAC saying, look, why can't we get our money back? I was actually asking some hard questions because we were missing about a million bucks in the building we built that didn't have complete the cafeteria because um, somebody had the bright idea that some of the vendor would come out and complete it. So, what the dish, after my questions, what came out of that was a survey that went nowhere. But yet, yeah, food options is a big issue. Um, the vet centers, the dream centers, uh, I think we need to have those on every campus. We have a vet center on our campus and we're starting our dream center now. Um, I think every campus needs the same thing. Uh, some, some campuses have nothing for vets except an information booth. I don't think that serves anybody's interest. Um, but my biggest uh, item that I really want to see is a credit union that is handling our financial aid. When we disperse so much money and so much is taken from students, I'm just incensed. It, um, when we did the investigation and found the information, what came out of that um, and our anger was adjustment in the contract. So right now, as of May 16th, there will be no more 50 cent charge for the debit uh, use, no more $20 charge. Uh, you'll have access to over 55,000 tellers. You'll be able to go to 7-Elevens and pull for money and a nationally recognized bank. So they haven't identified the bank yet, but a nationally recognized local bank. So you'll be able to go there, pull money out, and not get charged. Because right now, if you go to another teller, you get charged $2.50 just to look at your balance. That's egregious. Um, they charge you if you want to transfer cash after the fact to your bank account. A percentage, like it's a credit card charge. It's, it's ridiculous. And this, this is the battle that I took to them. So while I want to cover all these, that's why I say there's no one thing. These are the main items that overlap on every campus. Food options, vet centers, dream centers, safe zones for LGBTQIA. And um, uh, the biggest, my biggest ticket item that I would spend as much political capital on as I can is to get us a credit union and a way out of the clutches of higher one so that people can get their student... Uh, that financial aid and not get it stolen from them. Um, so many issues. Um, first of all, safety. Um, 
I mean, we talked about it in the previous act committee, um, West LA, um, we were actually going to work together to try to do a, a buddy program uh, with students. Um, Valley College, they were just shut down because of a bomb threat. Um, Southwest College, they had a shooting. Uh, here at Pierce, we also had an issue. At my home campus, uh, there was an attempt to kidnap of one of the female night students. Um, the fact that you don't feel safe to go to your own campus, um, even at night or during the day, because one day you are in fear that maybe somebody will come into your class and shoot you, and you're going to die, or you're going to get kidnapped, or what have you, that affects your student success. Um, I think safety is a number one priority. Um, you shouldn't come into any of, you, you're supposed to feel safe at your college campus. And the fact that you are subconsciously thinking, um, well, what if? And it shouldn't be that way. So the number one thing would be safety. Uh, second uh, would be the, um, our AB5 students, AB540 students. Uh, LAUSD was basically saying that um, they possibly might deport students who are, are undocumented. I actually wrote a resolution uh, for this upcoming GA. It's called Save Heaven for Undocumented Students. Um, no student should be put a barrier or have a challenge or, again, live in fear that they're going to be deported just because they're trying to uh, have a post-secondary education. Uh, alongside with that is affordable transit passes. Um, especially you guys, you guys are almost close to the LA area. Affordable transit passes, that, that's really, really important. I know Ali, he commutes a lot. I am fortunate enough that I have my own car, but I have a lot of friends who come from LA to go to Harbor College because there's certain programs that we offer at Harbor College that are not offered at the rest of the LA9 campuses. Uh, actually, Gerson and I, one of the other candidates, um, we're a part of an upcoming organization for student advocacy, and we're actually having a, a summit uh, for affordable transit passes. Uh, so that's one of the three things that we are working on right now. Thank you. Have a round of applause for our trustees. <laughs> Moving on to our ASO candidates. First, we'll start off with the president position. Um, speaking first is Barbara Lombrano. I just want to say good afternoon and a thank you for those of you that are here taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today for the forum. A person with experience, a person you can depend on, a person that will voice concerns and represent the student body, a person that will put in 110% is the type of person that you need serving as your ASO president. My name is Barbara Lombrano and I believe that I am that type of person and I'm ready to step into the that position to serve as Pierce College ASO President for 2016-2017. I've been a member of ASO since spring 2014, serving in many capacities. I was a Senator, Chair of the Community Welfare Committee, Club Council President, and I'm currently serving as the Vice President. I'm also a member of Phi Theta Kappa and Alpha Gamma Sigma Honor Societies, a member of the Student Veterans of America, and on the Executive Board for Pierce College Foundation. I've served on the Student Success Committee and I'm also currently serving on the Diversity Committee, Community, ah, let me get that right, Diversity Committee, I can't speak, Committee here at Pierce College. My first semester here at Pierce, all I focused on were my courses and getting in and out of community college and into a university to complete my goal of earning a bachelor's degree in business management. After personally experiencing some issues on campus during my first semester, I decided I could either just complain or I could get involved and help come up with some resolutions for these issues so that myself and others coming after me would not have to deal with these issues. With my experiences, I've learned more about a commitment level and what it takes to get the concerns of the student body heard and who the proper people are to hear those concerns so that we can get resolutions to the concerns. I have been involved with the food, getting uh, resolutions for the food problems that we've had here on campus. I, myself, David Doe, um, and a few Ali that you heard from earlier and some other students did go and speak to the Board of Trustees 
about a year ago. Had that not have happened, we would not have the food trucks back here on campus that we have now. Um, there have been some progress made, but there's still a way to go. Uh, commitment is what I will give to every component of Pierce community. It's your ideas and concerns that help move Pierce forward. Parking has and continues to be a problem, which I know cannot be resolved overnight, but it's a great concern for our students and I intend to keep working on that and helping to find a resolution. Concerns about safety and security is another issue that I hear from on almost a daily basis from students. That is moving in the right direction, but there's still more to accomplish on that. A state-of-the-art cafeteria that we have that's not being utilized for us to have affordable food options here on campus is another thing that I continue will want to work on that. I believe the most important ideas and concerns that the student government that should address are the ones that come from the most important component of peers, and that is you, the student body. So in that saying, I believe that, um, and I hope that you'll remember my name, Barbara Lombrano, when you cast your vote for ASO president. Thank you. All right. Barbara, um, I think your other candidate is here. Um, he's not, I, don't, I believe he was informed. So we're just gonna move to questions. Okay. Um, so uh, the first question um, that I have is, uh, why do you want to run for office? Why do I want to run for office? Um, I think part of that is, um, I mentioned it in the speech that I was giving, my first semester here at Pierce, I faced personal issues, whether it be at the business office or whether it was financial aid or whether it was being able to get the classes that I needed to pursue my goal of you know, earning my um, degree here and then moving on. Um, I could either, like I said, complain about it or I could get involved. And that is a very big component that I, in being active already and involved on campus, that I try and stress to my fellow classmates and when I'm out on campus speaking to students is it, students don't realize the power that they have. And it takes us getting involved and, and our concerns and our issues being heard to make changes within here. And so in continuing that, I want to um, serve the students more than what I already have. What do you think sets you apart from other candidates? That's kind of hard for me to answer because I have not met the gentleman that's, um, I guess, opposing, my opposing candidate. So I, I don't know anything about him. So I, I just think maybe my experiences, I'm an older returning student. Um, I've kind of lived life a little bit. I've raised children, I've served in the military, but more important than any of that is my experiences being here on Pierce College and seeing what the issues that I have faced and what other pe uh, students have faced and trying to help resolve those issues. What was your, what's your proposal to, uh, to fix the traffic in the morning, you know, fix the issues with the traffic conflict that goes around in the morning, you know, that sort of issue? I guess the first thing is because um, I personally am here very early on campus, so I have not had to experience that issue. So I would want to hear what actually are the students saying about what the issues are, and then be able to sit down with the right people. A lot of times, you know, we complain and we, we say, you know, oh, this needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed, but is it getting to the right person that can actually make the decisions to fix what, what the problem is. So I think that would be the first thing to do and then see what can be done. And what about the, the tech uh, uh, staff members too? And, and you know, what, what would you propose for the tech staff members that work with all the tech things on the campus? I'm not really sure what you're asking. Well, what I'm trying to get across here, what, what is, what, what, what do you, what do you, what's your proposal about this? For the tech, um, tech staff, the computer, you know, the tech, tech staff, and the, and the text department. What's your proposal for that? Oh, you, you mean about the Wi-Fi? Yes. Okay. Um, I know that that is something that comes up in almost every meeting in these different committees that I have attended or hear people that attend, and also for myself as being a student and for the faculty that are teaching that can't get Wi-Fi in the classroom. So they're limited on what, how they can teach and, and to get things and to even be able to do homework and stuff like that here on campus. It is a big issue. 
I know that a lot is being talked about and the things that I have been told is that, well, the campus, all the buildings have been built at different times, so there's no way of wiring it all into one system and stuff like that. But I believe as technology grows, there's, there has to be a solution. I personally don't know what that solution is, but it was some, but that would be something that definitely I would further look into and try and help come with a resolution. Wouldn't it also be possible for like a replaced product that, that might fix that issue or replace product because considering how cheap it is? Yeah, I am not a very technical person. So my job, I think, would be to find out what the issues and concerns are, and again, speak to the right people that can solve those solutions. I myself would not have a solution to that, but I think the students, and we have a lot of students that are geared that way in their mindset, and that's what they're studying, that's what they're gonna do, that might have solutions that the right people should hear and listen to. Yeah, because we need really, really, really responsible tech people on this campus. And, and as far as I know, that they, they suddenly the Wi-Fi is back in the library working, and same with the tutoring center and the study rooms, but and, and, and pretty much student services in that hallway with the bathroom, but not entirely the campus, especially the SIP that used to have that working operation that stopped like what a year and a half or so ago okay um does anybody else have questions before i ask i'm sorry if i'm taking over so yeah um does anybody else have questions for right now okay that's all okay um thank you barbara to vice president but we also we don't have any candidates right now um, um, but we will be extending the deadline for the position we'll move on to club council president you know what? we'll move on to club council president because our treasure candidate Mahesh Mukhachan is not here right now I'm gonna read that you said a speech oh that's wonderful <laughs> you got three minutes <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm reading on the head's behalf. Um, good morning to everyone. I would first like to extend my apologies for not being able to make it today. Um, he's actually in class. As many sure, I know many of you would like to actually see the face of the person you're voting for, hopefully. Um, um, with that said, my name is Mahed McCurchian, and I would like your endorsement for my candidacy as ASO Treasurer. The role of treasurer is one of the most important elements of student representation at Pierce Community College. To truly understand how things actually get done, we must look at the money and the cash flow behind every event and action. Since it is the case that money is the ultimate liberator of pursuing materialistic pursuits, I believe that it is the duty of the treasurer to uphold impartiality and conceptualization of how initiatives for spending money will ultimately better the experiences of all students. Even though I'm the only person running for the, pres the position of ASO treasurer, I would still like everyone to know I'm a qualified individual when it comes to the management of funds and the deliberation of how to maximize student representation. This is my second semester at Pierce. However, in my time here, I've learned many things about this campus and especially about ASO. Currently, I'm the president of the Philosophy Club, a first-term senator representing political science, and also a member of the Finance Committee and the chairperson of the Rules and Laws Committee. The reason why I believe I'm qualified to be the treasurer is that I know I'll put the appropriate effort and to make certain that our, all my duties are fulfilled. Through my education, I've shown a high level of consistency and responsibility. Since I plan to major in political science and pursue a career in politics and law, it is crucial that I develop the professional skills that are available from opportunities such as these. I truly believe that hard work coupled with the intent to exponentially expand our horizons to new endeavors is the essence to a satisfying and successful future. With that said, I hope you allow me the opportunity to serve you as a student. Remember, every dollar is a voice, and with me as your next ASO treasurer, every dollar will count. Vote yes from ahead. Thank you, Lara, for speaking on the head's behalf. We will be moving on to club council presidents. First up is George Ambrand. Okay, hello everyone, I'm George Ampran. I'm running for club council president, obviously. Okay, so 
Yeah, one of the big things that I want to do as club council president is publicize the clubs more because I've had a great experience with the clubs here on campus, but a lot of people, they don't even like know much about them or they think that the clubs are like exclusive things to get into and they don't want to join and stuff. So I would like to publicize the clubs more, make it so that more people know about all the opportunities on campus. Like I'm sure that a lot of people here are um, really involved, but I'm sure that even the people here can't name like all of the clubs on campus or something. So there's that. And then another thing is that I would like to stream, or I'm not sure if streamline is the right word, but make the process of actually running a club simpler. Or, cause like, let's say for Club Rush, which um, I guess goes along with my last point, what is um, like the only time at all that clubs are ever publicized after that, no one cares anymore. But yeah, with Club Rush, if a club wants to fundraise during that time, which would be a great time to fundraise, they can not unless they do stuff really early or maybe even the semester before. So that's a problem. And yeah, I think in general, just trying to get stuff done in a club takes a long time to do. because There's a lot of paperwork and red tape. So I like to simplify the process of actually running the clubs. Thank you for listening. making it more simple for clubs to... Well, like I said, with fundraising, there's a lot, or something, um, like, okay, another thing is um, for raise, you can request funds from the ASO, but that takes a long time to actually get the funds because then you have to send it to the Senate and then it has to go to the finance meeting and it has to go back to the Senate. I think that should, that can and should be um, made more concise. Like maybe instead of sending it to the Senate first, just straight to the Finance Committee, because I don't really see the point of sending it to the Senate first, where um, most of the time it just agrees with the, what the Finance Committee says anyway. So, and most of the time when people are, or when it's actually voted on, not the, or when it's approved, when the finance committee's um, opinion is approved, then most of the time people don't even remember what the request was, so it gets explained again. So I like to cut down on that. And maybe for the paperwork to fundraise, I think it would, um, I'm assuming you could make it more concise also. Thank you. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, George. Next up is Andre Nicolchia or Nets. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, participants of this forum. Uh, I am running for club council president. Uh, someone that came here two years on Thursdays ago, uh, the life at, at, at least at LA for what I know is different. I had to, because I didn't finish my high school days uh, back in Peru, which is where I'm from. I was sh not sure, I was very surprised with the way of of how school, high school was here with all the clubs and all the organizations and the only uh, very like my best friend of my senior year here she was very very involved and she dragged me a little she dragged me a little bit to her to her way of uh, living uh, I got into few clubs but I didn't want to get involved because I wanted to succeed uh, with the, that last year that last year with very good grades. Uh, then I came here to Pierce, and even though I still wanted to succeed with very good grades, I I thought of giving it a chance to getting involved, and 
that's how I joined the Senate. And I learned so many things my first semester at the Senate meetings. I learned, I, I meet with so many people and they, these people knew so much and I just ended up learning more and more and more. Even in my first semester, I tried to, do, I try, so as a senator, you help a committee. So I tried to get involved in, in as many committees as I could and I tried to help them a lot. And then this semester, I tried to make my own club. And so that, that's, that's the problem. I tried to make my own club and it got, it ended up being really, really hard and really, really so much to work. And as George said, one of my goals would be uh, to make life simpler for clubs. Yeah, uh, another goal that I have is uh, to, to, to talk to departments. Uh, so maybe they can uh, push their uh, students to get involved. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Why do you think you would be good for this position? Uh, I already know so many people that are really involved. I know many presidents from clubs. Uh, so yeah, I think I already know them. I can talk to them like they are my friends. And for example, I want to start just explaining how I could make it easier for clubs. Um, I know all clubs, uh, they already know how to run their clubs, but new clubs, that's, that's a hard, it's, it's harder for them. So every semester, a club charters a game. I just want to talk to that person that is chartering one-to-one, -one, have a good, good, deep conversation of what's the role of the club and how hard it's going to be and how to just break it down to make it easier for them. Okay. Yes? Um, I have a, a question, but it's a bit awkward. Um, I noticed how clubs have a certain schedules that are not always convenient, but, um, and, I, and I and I only only get like six hours in during the early part of the day. What's your proposal for you know the schedule slots for the clubs? Some clubs have electronic members. Not every club will try to implement that and make the electronic members formal members, even though they are still electronic. So you can still be part of that club even though you're not physically there on the meetings. Okay, because I joined a big club and it wasn't as easy, wasn't easy the first time. <laughs> well, I'll try to make it more uh, easier for everyone. Thank you. So I have a question for both uh, the club council president, uh, president candidates. Um, so George will go first. Um, so you guys are talking about how like you want to make everything simpler, but what other issues will you turn focus on? Well, publicizing, like I said, to get people more involved with the clubs in general. And okay, a little nervous. Okay. Um, Well, I would also like to tell people more about how they can start clubs and encourage them to, which would also add to the ASO fund, because I believe, or I know that they need to pay their ASO fees to start a club, and they need a, six other members, I believe, to um, actually start the club. And yeah, most people, they don't know how to start a club. Like, I have, I have a friend who he wanted to start a STEM club, and like this is a problem where he didn't even know if there was one and then like I checked on the website the Pierce College website and then it has a list of clubs but they're so disorganized and stuff it has some clubs that I don't I don't even think are still here anymore but yeah so it's hard to find that and he wanted to start one but he didn't even know how okay are you done? yeah all right all right can you read the question, please? Yes, I can reread the question. Um, what other issues besides simplifying um, the process um, will your turn focus on? Uh, well, as George said, publicizing. I, I think working with the ASO will be a really good benefit for uh, all the clubs. Since the very beginning of the semester, uh, I would really like for ASO to start their committees as soon as possible so we can work with publicity, social cultural, 
and even community welfare because giving back to the community is such an important thing. Mm. Other than that, uh, I think most most students they don't know what's the importance of the importance of being involved, of being involved, how it can make you look good not only for for like universities, but it can it can also it it gives you these responsibilities outside from the school that are that you can actually compare this to real life because you go to school, you study, and you have responsibilities with a club, which is basically what you will have to do when you grow up, which is go to work and then get back to your community or have responsibilities with your family. So I think clubs are actually a good way. So in, in the transition between high school, maturity, and university, and real life. Well, I think that there still is a connection, actually, because like I went to the Pierce cleanup, and then at the Pierce cleanup, there was a lot of AGS members, and then sure there were also PTK members, and then yeah, uh, I actually think that there or there's a new love also. I think that's like a psychology honor society. So is that too? But I'm actually on the AGS board, so there's that. <laughs> so. Um, I have a question. Yeah. All right. Uh, could you repeat the question? Yes. Um, so, how would you reestablish or um, make the connection stronger with the other societies here? Um, I don't know if other societies have to reach other. I know most clubs have to. Uh, but again, as I said, I'm planning to talk to every person that is chartering or president uh, personally, one to one, to say, to just to talk about what their needs are, the benefits of working with ASO, and establishing that you have ASO for anything, for health, and uh, we'll be will be there for you. Uh, another thing that I wanted to say is that I think uh, PTK and AGS. I shouldn't need as many uh, help as many, as other clubs that are just starting, but any time, like I know for sure the club council president, even George or me, whoever is getting chose, uh, we will be there for you guys. That's all I can say. Thank you. Elections Forum. Uh, I would just like to remind everyone that the student trustee elections are going on online right now until April 30th. You should have gotten an email uh, allowing you to vote. And the ASO, uh, the ASO elections will be on April 27th and 28th um, on the mall, so look out for that. And thank you everyone for coming.